Yeah, it was kind of hard for me in the early days starting to to play the instrument. My father, he's a Jehovah Witness. He preaches on the pulpit, so more likely he's a minister. So it was try, kind of hard to convince him to um, accept having a son playing the instrument, which is our national instrument. But it, uh, it, 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 my dream came true because I was always learning to play pan since I was about seven, eight years. And it all started in um, the late 1973, where Steve Achaiba, he at that time he was the captain of um, Maritime Life Hackers. And he came around, he used to sell eggs and so on at, at those days, house to house. So knowing that I knew he was the captain of um, Hatters, begged him, talk to dad, you know, talk to my father, let me know that I want to learn to play. And he asked, he came back about five, six different times, and then my father couldn't take it. He said, okay, I'll let him go to the Panya for a week. You know, and that week is up to now, 1992, I still play. So, what is what is your family like now about your career and band? Well, they they are very much into it. They they love it tremendously. They see they they see the determination in me, because unlike a lot of other people, a lot of other probably so to speak, partners and arrangers, I am not really a competitor. I get to love it so much that I want to really see it grow, and not really grow in Trinidad only, but internationally all over the world. So they, I get tremendous support from my mother, my father, especially my sister, my, my biggest sister, Antoinette. And um, I just hope it and pray hard to go that it could be recognized and respected as another international instrument. Not as a phenomenal thing, just for carnival alone. And people see for calypso. Or, you, know, you know, people put pan with calypso. And, no, it's an instrument that could play anything. You know, and this is one of my aims and dreams. Well, I am, I, am a, I am very close to God because I really can't explain what I do. I, I go with vibes. And I am a spiritual. I baptized about eight years now, you know, and I'm very, very close to the Master because I, I believe without Him there's nothing. And I do everything with His name, with, with Him in me, you know, growing with, within me. As I told you before, I can't really explain Sometimes I would do certain pieces of music, and we would reach to um, to thirteen to eleven. And if you're talking in music terms, and I wouldn't even know that, he would know, and probably somebody who would read and write. But it's a gift from God, and I the least I could do is to repay him, is to pray, and, and not even ask for material things. Just ask him to love me, you know, because it's a, it's it's really a wonderful thing learning to play play the instrument and play it well. And what and what makes an arranger arranger? It's, it's pertaining to God again. It's a gift. I am. Um, I meet so many musicians that I, when I travel, that go to Berkeley's School of Music and Juilliard, are very good players, but probably, so to speak, probably followers. They could play anything you show them. But I say, take the initiative to go to front and say, like, do a piece of music. Few people could really do it. I am. Um, so how to be an arranger, it's very hard to explain. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gift. It's something natural. It has to come from within. Um, as I tell you before, some could play, some could arrange, you know, some follow some leads. Some, it's like that. Yeah. What do you think um, has to happen for the pan to develop and to grow and to move outside? I mean, what, how are we going to be able to, to tap into making it Profitable for well, what I could tell you is that um, we're talking about profit and how we could uplift Steve and as first of all in your own country and then abroad. Well, Pan Trinbego runs the Pan movement in this country. And I believe strongly that Pan Trinbego making a mistake, which I am a member of because anybody playing the instrument who is part of the instrument is automatically a member. I keep so, um, we depend too much on government. Government has too many other things to take care of when coming to taking care of the country. Another thing that we're making a big mistake with, we are very mixed people. We are Chinese, Indians. Everybody has different cultures. We have to stop depending on government and go out for us to really... We have to... Start making the money on your own. Don't depend on, if you're looking for money, that you have to wait on NCC or you have to wait on the government to get money because if you had that money, 
all pandemic, all these thousands of pandemics stagnated. That's a waste of time. The instrument far bigger than that. And I'm not really mocking government, or I'm not mocking pension labor, but that's my personal opinion. We are depending too much on the government. Where we already have the gig go abroad, people love this thing. People pay up to $75, $80 to see a panel play an instrument that plays anything whatsoever. Why wait on government when we have so many islands? We have North America, we have Europe, Asia, Africa to conquer. It has to start from somewhere, let it start from home. But I always keep telling the president and friends of mine in the body, but they're listening. So let me wait and see what government could really do. Well, I will tell you, Carol, what I, what I have seen is that, you know, we all talk about, and I like to start like this, we all talk about Andy Norrell. And we all seem to dislike Andy Norrell. But what Andy Norrell is doing is what we don't do, or what probably we still need to learn a lot. I'm talking about pan men and the body itself, Pan Trinbego, marketing. He, he came to Trinidad, which I know he was playing the instruments since he was born to early man and whatnot. But he came to Trinidad and see that we, all right, we love a phenomenal thing, which is Panorama, a very, very, very prestigious competition. And he saw the instrument, probably he saw the instrument a lot greater and bigger than that. He took the instrument, he composed music, he takes calypso music and fuses it, puts it within a jazz line, and makes tremendous money. Now the whole world knows who's Andy Norell, but the whole world doesn't even know where Pan was born. So we have a serious problem with how we market. And I blame not us, the Pan men, and the organization to a point to. But I blame tremendously. So the businessmen, the businessmen really not involved as they should, seeing that it is a national instrument used by BWIA because they know the, 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 the logo for BWIA, or the logo is, is PAN. It's a PAN. And we are not really doing enough. We are losing our culture. I just always say this you never miss the water until the well runs dry. We have to start loving our own thing first. You see, like how we love reggae. With all due respect to Bob Marley, Jamaican people, and their culture. But we love reggae music more than Silver and Calypso. That is an insult to me, who does be traveling, talking about the instrument, seeing how, what, what the instrument does to other people. But when you come home, we only want to hear carnival time, so to speak, Stalin say part time lovers. You know, so we, we really have to start part, quickly getting our acts together, where is marketing the instrument. Promoting the instrument and it has to start from the top. If Panchin Bego is the head of the body and the businessmen, we could take it from there. Don't depend on no seven point something million. This is billions of dollars worth of talent we have here. It, it, Carol, it really keeps us apart um, tremendously because the, the, the competition, you know, Panama for me is the biggest thing in Carnival. Um, Without the competition, I have to explain this to you wouldn't get the youth and then coming out to learn to play the instrument. But the competition is causing more damage than good. Because imagine arrangers against one another. You represent a particular steel band and I represent a particular steel band. But you totally against me because I represent a, 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 you know, a different band. <coughs> Excuse. I am, I am totally against that. But I have a plan that I really shouldn't even talk, you know, but I really want to go to the Ministry of Education where I could, um, I, I don't even want money for those. Go to the different schools, different days, talk to the whole school, put it into the culture, see what the instrument could do, explain to the kids if it will help them get come off the streets, help them get off a drug, help them concentrate more on culture, you know, basically. You know, I love, I love doing the music, I love playing for Panama, and well, as a person, I don't like it. But people just come and approach me and ask me, but how you use professor, you never win a panel. It really, really don't bother me. You know, the win would be nice. But then when you look at the $20,000, and you look at the prestige just for two weeks, it's still worth it. The instrument are a whole lot greater than that. And I think we should try and look to market the instrument as so another area than to look strictly towards like panorama or festival or whatever the case may be. Pan as part of the curriculum in schools is a very, very important thing. I believe that um, government is not seeing it as, as probably as important as how I would. Because the youth really is not part of our culture. You know, they love a lot of other different things. 
which is the R&B and the reggae and whatnot. You're supposed to already get pan as part of the curriculum in the schools and embed it in them. It would get them off the streets. It would get them to stop taking drugs. It's a beautiful program. Yeah, I believe tremendously in the standardization of the instrument. I believe that's a big key back for us also. We are um, different tuners um, have different opinions. And this is probably why the biggest thing that I believe that the pan is standardized. But that's the first step I believe that we have to make towards the progress of the upliftment for the instrument more, the standardizing the instruments in there. Mm -hmm. How does that help to happen? Well, all tuners have to get together with the executive body of Pan Shumigo or all pan men and decide what is what, what is simplest to play, what could be marketable. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about the whole um, fusion, fusion pan with other music, especially um, mm. jazz, which well, you're well known for now. Yeah. Like well, I love, I love jazz tremendously, the instrument playing jazz music. Not to say that I'm not a lover of my own culture, which is Calypso, but Pan really sounds great playing fusion jazz, even the old traditional jazz, which is the deep hop. I am. Um, this is what I do when I travel a lot. So, for, in order for people of other cultures or nationalities to understand what the instrument could do, you have to play things that they know. And this is my approach, and the response this be tremendous. Mm -hmm. Do you think some? Um you have more support outside, what, you know, when you have shows outside. Yeah, people turn out tremendously. For instance, last year I did a concert in Washington at Crampton Auditorium, that's in Howard University, with, um, excuse, with Robbie Greenwich. The place was sold out, 5,000 people. Robbie Greenwich and Ken Professor Freeman concert, 5,000 people. Um, I felt so good for the instrument for myself, you know, it was phenomenal. When Robbie and myself, we first saw the place, I turned and I told him, boy, I said, you know how this panting is a struggle business? You feel we could pull this place? By the time 7.30, the show was started at 8 o'clock. By the time 7.30, the place was packed. That I told all the people from coming in. When they tape all these panorama songs for all these years, yes, where does it go? Into the library? <laughs> and I'm just asking, you know. Because I believe personally that, you know, you cover the panorama, you would cover the festival, you would cover Pan Bramage. You would have so many different little recordings of um, individual panels doing recordings, but you don't hear it. I find something has to be there too. So what we're doing is just re um, recording and logging it, just keeping it in the libraries or whatever. The media is supposed to play our culture more. You have to embed it into the people. Play steel band music more. You know how nice I just feel sometimes when I hear... A Panama tune from 1969, 1972, you know, I, I feel good. But how often do we do that? Once a month? Once every two, three months? The media is supposed to be tremendously more involved with promoting because the media is everybody. How many people listen to the radio, or to the television, read the papers, whatever the case might be? I think, yes, we're supposed to really get more involved playing local, local music on the airwaves. Well, if we could... Sell it to the businessman to see where he can make a profit on his own, why not? But we have to sell it to him, because a businessman ain't going to want to pour so much and so much of money to help promote the van where he's not seeing dividends or profits in return. We have, to, we have to devise a way where we could prove to him that it, it would sell his business. Simple as that.